Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the War of the Rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the War of the Rebellion. When the new Irish Republican Brotherhood, or in the North American case, the Fenians emerged, they looked to individuals like John Mitchell and Thomas Francis Mayer, leaders of the revolution passed in 1848, to lead this new revolution against British rule, the new attempt to bring about Irish independence. Mitchell was initially reluctant about it. He did return to Paris before the War of the Rebellion, to support the Irish Republican Brotherhood, but he was still lukewarm, whether its leadership was up for the task. Nevertheless, when the war in the United States ends and he had been briefly imprisoned, Mitchell in November of 1865 moves to Paris. He becomes a financial agent for the IRB, but he again is not sure whether this will be the right way to go. He strongly disagrees with the terror campaign that the IRB institutes, including a bombing of a prison in Great Britain. He returns briefly to the United States again in October of 67, publishing the Irish Citizen as a newspaper. And then, in 1875, after 26 years in exile, he returns to Ireland. Now note, he's still a convicted felon from the British perspective, but he's allowed in without questions. Due to his popularity and how well he's known in Ireland, he is wrote, written in as a candidate for a parliamentary seat for the county of Tipperary. He wins the election which of course places everyone in an awkward position because he is a convicted felon after all and therefore cannot take his seat in parliament. Mitchell dies before Irish independence happens, a cause he had supported for such a long time and returned to in this last decade he doesn't see fulfilled. The sad reality is that Mitchell fought in two failed revolutions. He ended up twice on the, if you want, wrong side of history. But of course he and many Irish people were remembered today because of the work they have done. So Mitchell is less so remembered because of the unfortunate embrace of a pro-slavery view that puts him at odds 
with many of the Irish and what they fought for in the US Army during the war's rebellion. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.